Hi, my name is Julia Romanowska and I am a bioinformatician uh, in the data scientist. I love our programming, data visualization, um, and I'm also one of the founders of uh, the local Our Ladies chapter. And today I will tell you something about uh, my one of the projects I'm involved in. Um, and you can see here the logo of the project, uh, which uh, symbolizes that we would like to focus on neurological diseases and we want to find drugs that would, uh, new drugs that would treat the neurological diseases. And we do it by uh, so-called drug repurposing using data from Norwegian health registries. I will tell you a bit about the what is drug repurposing, but first, um, how do we define uh, the problem uh, we want to solve when we want to find a new drug? Well, we want to uh, uh, find a pr protein first uh, that is central to the disease, and then we want to find a small molecule drug that would fit into this protein. And this is a little bit like a puzzle. Uh, and we have millions of possibilities. Um, so traditionally, we would first, um, maybe through, uh, through biological experiments, find this protein that is um, a cause of the disease, or uh, we know that is very important in the disease progression. Uh, then would, we would go to uh, a bioinformatician lab and uh, try to do some simulations to find the drug that would best fit to this protein. Uh, and next we can um, go again to an experimental lab to check whether uh, these drugs that were found computationally to bind to the protein really bind in, uh, um, in a test tube. And if we have success in all these uh, experiments and uh, simulations, if we find some uh, molecules that really bind, then we can go to the clinics and test those on humans. Problem with this approach is that uh, it is very uh, timely, it is very costly, and lots, lots, lots of uh, um, trials fail. So it's a bit like diving in this uh, old-fashioned suit. We have better ways to do it now. And one of the way, these ways is so-called drug repurposing. So nowadays in the market, there are all, all these drugs available already um, been in use uh, by many, many people in many countries and um, throughout many years. So we need to use this data. And Norway has a um, unique position here because um, there are lots of data collected uh, on Norwegians through the so-called health registries. Uh, so we have all this data. We can retrospectively look at information about drug usage uh, and history of illnesses. Um, then we can maybe find uh, which drugs are significantly changing the risk of a specific disease, we can take these drugs and test them on uh, cells or on animals. Um, and then if we find uh, some positive answers, we can explore these drugs even more computationally. Um, so the project is called the drone, drug repurposing for neurological diseases. And we have lots of data. We have the entire prescription registry of Norway that contains more than 600 million prescriptions on more than 4 million Norwegians. Uh, and uh, they, this data contains more than 1800 various drugs. Um, in addition, we have also information about the clinical diagnosis for the Norwegian patients and demographic information from Statistics Norway. So it's a huge amount of data. Uh, we're doing advanced statistical analysis on these data to check which drugs change the risk uh, of developing a specific disease here. I'm uh, showing, for example, Parkinson's disease, but we are also 
um, pursuing other diseases. We can take these drugs that seem to lower the risk of the disease, take them to the lab, perform experiments uh, in cells or in animals, um, and hopefully we can find a new treatment then. We can also take their uh, drugs that um, show um, to increase the risk of Parkinson's disease uh, and do some experiments on them, but also do some bioinformatical analysis. Uh, and hopefully we can understand more of uh, how the disease progresses. So we have lots of people, we have lots of ideas, we have lots of data. We need to have a system to manage this uh, research. Um, and of course, we are using R. Um, apart from using the uh, packages that implement strictly statistical methods that we are using in analysis, we have also created an internal R package to ease access to the data for all of the group members. Uh, and so this was done um, with the help of use this, the fantastic tool. Uh, we have also created custom templates for our markdown reports. Uh, and we have uh, in, enabled uh, easy, access, easy access to data through RSQLite and dbplyr uh, queries uh, right uh, within R to a database containing all the data. Uh, and of course, we are very focused on how to communicate the uh, results uh, well, uh, so that we are do doing lots of data visualizations, both passive and interactive. We're using ggplot2, and uh, we're using Flags, Flags dashboard to create um, nice HTML um, reports directly from our markdown. We're using Plotly and Crosstalk to create the interactiveness in these reports. Um, and as I've mentioned, we are reporting in our markdown. Uh, and I'm also a fan of Zeringan and all the uh, extra packages that extend Zeringan to create presentations. So my take home message is uh, R helps us to manage uh, the research group manage uh, the research itself because we can create reproducible research. We can track easily any changes um, in the project. Uh, we can easily co collaborate uh, on the code or on the um, uh, presentations. And we can create fantastic uh, presentations of visualizations of the results. <laughs>